Well, it's the bottom of the third inning here at the Columbia Firefly Stadium in South Carolina. The Fireflies have just hit a home run, but in about half an hour's time, it's the moon that's going to be knocking the sun out of the park here. The whole stadium's going to be plunged into complete darkness. The sellout crowd here are going to get ringside seats to that once-in-a-lifetime experience of seeing the sun completely obscured by the disk of the moon. But the few thousand people here, tiny in comparison to the hundreds of millions who will have seen it across the US. The eclipse began its journey less than an hour ago, no, about an hour ago, over on the west coast in Oregon. The shadow of the moon makes landfall in Oregon, and so begins the biggest collective ooh, ah, and oh my god in the history of the solar system. They're calling it the Great American Eclipse. As far as the science goes, it's no different to any other. They happen somewhere every 18 months. But this one is different. It's the most watched and recorded ever. An eclipse to eclipse all others. Here in Columbia, they're warming up for the biggest game in town, one of only three being played in the path of totality. Uh, well, when I was little, I got to go see a little eclipse, and now I get to see it with my kids, and that's pretty cool, I think. The moon will be in front of the sun, though this will be a little of light peeking out. It's going to be 99 more years until he'll get to see it, so he's hoping to live to 105, and she's hoping to live to 102. It's the first time in a century a total eclipse is traversing the U.S. The small disk of the moon's shadow made landfall in Oregon. This path of totality is now passing in a sweeping diagonal at 1,600 miles an hour towards Charleston, South Carolina. 11 million people live directly along that line. 100 million more within a day's drive. There's been gridlock around top eclipse viewing sites like national parks. Many people expected to be experiencing the moment from the roadside. But even those who haven't made a celestial pilgrimage are in for a treat. The lower 48 states and 320 million people seeing most of the sun obscured by the moon. That means millions of smartphones and half a billion eyeballs. A great opportunity for citizen science. Cameras are being lofted on high altitude balloons. High schools and universities collaborating to take still images of the event all along its path to knit together the longest ever movie of an eclipse. NASA is sending up supersonic jets to chase the moon's shadow and study the sun's normally invisible corona in unprecedented detail. What can we expect to see from watching a total eclipse? Well, I'll give you my personal answer, not my rocket science. I've never seen a total eclipse. So I want to see the sun blocked. I want to see the corona, the little filaments of corona. I want to see the Bailey's beads, which are the little bits of light that sometimes you get as the eclipse starts, as light goes around the mountains. I want to see all that in person, standing there in front of it. That's what's special if you're a rocket scientist or just an 11-year-old. Before science, eclipses were signs, portents of doom. Astrologers have pointed out President Trump was born on a lunar eclipse. Today's event, they say, a powerful impact on his chart, disrupting politics. But with recent events in Washington, that seems to have been happening without celestial influence. What this eclipse means for most people is everyday American life being interrupted by something that has nothing at all to do with politics. Something to unite the states under a single star, the one we all share. Well, welcome back to South Carolina, where the solar eclipse is getting well and truly underway. Joining me here is Deborah Amato, an, an engineer with NASA. Um, Deborah, before we you know, carry on, should we just check in and see, see where the sun is and what yeah, it's doing? Yeah, I think we should. I've got my, I've got my glasses on. Tell me what oh, we can it's see. it's so beautiful. It, it looks like maybe a third of the sun, crescent, uh, covered by the moon. It's just such a beautiful, spectacular view. So we're still in the partial phase of the eclipse right now. Yes. What can we expect when we get closer to totality and when that, that amazing moment actually happens? So when, as we get closer to, to, to totality, we'll, see, um, we'll start seeing the corona, the superheated outer atmosphere of the sun. And uh, we may see a diamond ring effect where we'll have a bright spot and, and a ring. We may see uh, Bailey's... Beads, Bailey's beads, beads I've heard of beads. Um, It's hot out here, it's, it's and okay. And then once, once it's covered, we'll be able to see the, the very um, 
the very bright outer Corona and um, and the de- some of the details in the Corona. Now, obviously, we're, we're suffering out in the heat right now. Are, yeah. are we expecting the temperature to drop as well during that moment of totality? Yes, uh, the temperature could drop 10, 15 degrees uh, during totality, which will be amazing. And it tends to affect the animals as well. With They may think that it's uh, getting to be near twilight. So uh, There's more human animals around here, but let me understand this. There, there are, there's a solar eclipse on average every 18 months somewhere on the Earth's surface. Why is this one the great American eclipse? Why is, it, why is this something different? This is the great American eclipse because the last time that we had a coast-to-coast eclipse in the United States was 1918. And uh, every state can see, uh, can see a partial eclipse, if not a total eclipse. And within the path of totality, there are uh, some 12 million people that can actually see the total eclipse. So it's just going to be so well observed. And yeah. there's science going on too, is that Absolutely. right? What, what, what opportunities does it present scientists to study this eclipse more than others? Uh, well, this eclipse gives us a chance, uh, such a long uh, distance over land. It gives us a chance to have multiple observations um, spread apart. As I understand, NASA have got jets up chasing the shadow of this eclipse to try and see that corona. What does, what's so important about the corona? Well, the corona is the, um, the super hot uh, atmosphere of the sun. And we can see things going on in the corona that um, may not be observable on the disk of the sun. So the scientists are really interested in seeing, um, seeing what's happening there. So we can better understand, the, better understand the workings of the sun. Welcome back to South Carolina. There is the thinnest sliver of the sun still showing. There's an eerie twilight descending on this baseball stadium here. The shadows look strange. Something momentous is clearly about to happen. As you said, we are about 40 seconds away from the moment of totality itself. Uh, I've never seen it before. I don't know what to tell you uh, is about to happen. Uh, But what I can tell you now, we've been suffering from the heat here all day. It's August in the southern US, and it is getting perceptibly cooler as we speak. I wish I could bring you a live shot of the sun right now, but I'm going to just look back up and tell you where we're getting to. An even narrower sliver of the sun that's just peeking out from behind the shadow of the moon right now. Totality here is going to last 2 minutes 40 seconds. Now, that's not very long, considering the shadow of the moon itself here on Earth is 70 miles across. But remember, it's racing across the continental United States at 1,600 miles an hour. Here we go. There's a tiny sliver of the sun left. I'm sure you can see it's getting quite a bit darker. But it's not totality yet. Then the Budweiser light off. We're expected to see that what they call second contact is when the last bit of the sun's peeking out. We get what's called the diamond ring effect. We're looking out for that. Tom, get them to turn the Budweiser off. There's now. Incredible. Excuse me. What's it look like to you? This is awesome. Uh, look at it, just look. I mean, it's fantastic. Let's it. turn off this top light, turn off the light on the camera. Woo! You probably can't still see me. Woo! But what I'm seeing now is astonishing. Ahead of the sun, just point the camera up. Let's try and see it if we can. A perfect ring of light <laughs> as the moon's surf, moon's disk perfectly obscures the sun. That's the sun's corona you can see pointing out behind it. It's one million degrees hotter than the surface of the sun, but one million times fainter. That's why we can only see it at a crucial moment of a total eclipse like this. It gives scientists a unique opportunity to study that corona in unprecedented detail, especially for an eclipse like this, which has passed over land for almost its entirety. We can also see in the ground around me the night stars. I can see Venus up there during the middle of the day. Let's go and get some more reaction to other observers here. Just follow me, Ben, for a second. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. What is it? What does it look like to you? Looks like we're in the middle of nighttime. It's unbelievable, really. It's dark, it's cool, it's great. 
Did you ever think you'd like to see something like this? Absolutely not. This is a very unique experience, definitely. Excuse me, young lady, what do you make of it? It's wonderful. I love it. Tell them it's your birthday. It's my birthday, so... Many what a perfect birthday present from the solar system. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Let me see how much time we've got left. Only about a minute left to go here. One thing that does make you reflect on is you, there's a lot of, through the history of eclipses, before scientific understanding of them, these were portents of doom. In many ways, you can see where that portentous uh, feeling came from. We feel disconnected. I feel disconnected from the, the star, our star that sustains all life on Earth. We've been cut off with it, from it, albeit temporarily. Tom, I mean, how wonderfully American that they don't turn the lights off and particularly the ads off. Incredible, isn't it? The lights in the, uh, in the stadium are off. Oh, we're just getting that. Ah, that's Third amazing. Contact now, John. And the sun is returning. Well, that's a total eclipse from here. Back to you, John.